Good morning. All right. Uh, if you were with me just a minute ago, sorry for the technical difficulty. I'm back and I think my audio is working now. Um, we are reading um, 2 Samuel chapter 19 today, finishing out the chapter after a small break um, in Samuel, um, reading verses 16 through 43. Let's go ahead and pray, then we'll read the passage for the day. Heavenly Father, the Holy God, you are wise, you are just. We know justice is um, yours and yours alone. And God, we thank you for your word, which you've given us to teach us about your character and about your justice, to show us how we fall short and to teach us how you have made a way. Thank you for your long suffering nature, your patience and your righteousness. God, we pray that today as we read your word, we would take none of this for granted, that we would not assume that we know better than you, but we pray that you would give us uh, submissive hearts. That you would give us submissive hearts that would take seriously your word and seek to obey it in all, all things. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and read Second Samuel nineteen sixteen through 43. And Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjaminite from Bahurim, hurried to come down with the men of Judah to meet King David, and with him were a thousand men from Benjamin. And Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, with his fifteen sons and his twenty servants, rushed down to the Jordan before the king, and they crossed the ford to bring over the king's household and to do his pleasure. And Shimei, the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan and said to the king, Let not my lord hold me guilty or remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. Do not let the king take it to heart, for your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I have come this day, the first of all the house of Joseph, to come down to meet my lord the king. Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? But David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should this day be as an adversary to me? Shall anyone be put to death in Israel this day? For do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? And the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king gave him his oath. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. He had neither taken care of his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came back in safety. And when he came to Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? He answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for your servant said to him, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go with the king, for your servant is lame. He has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like the angel of God. Do therefore what seems good to you, <clears throat> for all my father's house were but men doomed to death before my lord the king. But you set your servant among those who eat at your table. <clears throat> <clears throat> what further right have I then to cry to the king? And the king said to him, Why speak any more of your affairs? I have decided, you and Ziba shall divide the land. And Mephibosheth said to the king, Oh, let him take it all, <clears throat> since my lord the king has come safely home. Now Barzillia, Barzillai, the Gil Gileadite, <clears throat> had come down from Rogelim, and he went on with the king to the Jordan to escort him over the Jordan. Barzillai was a very aged man, eighty years old. He had provided the king with food while he stayed at Manahan, for he was a very wealthy man. And the king said to Barzillai, Come over with me, and I will provide for you with me in Jerusalem. But Barzillai said to the king, How many years have I still to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am this day eighty years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats or what he drinks? Can I still listen to the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king repay me with such a reward? 
Please let your servant return, that I may die in my own city, near the grave of my father and my mother. But here is your servant, Chimham. Let him go over with my lord the king, and do for him whatever seems good to you. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me, and I will do for him whatever seems good to you. And all that, desi- all that you desire of me, I will do for you. <clears throat> then all the people went over the Jordan, and the king went over, and the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him. All the people of Judah, and also half the people of Israel, brought the king on his way. When all the men of Israel came to the king and said to the king, Why have our brothers, the men of Judah, stolen you away? And brought the king and his household over the Jordan, and all David's men with him. All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is our, cho- our close relative. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at, the, at all at the king's expense? Or has he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, and in David also we have more than you. Why then did you despise us? Were we not the first to speak of bringing back our king? But the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. <coughs> God's word to us today in the book of Second Samuel. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and observe. So you see that Shimei hurried to meet David with a thousand men. He asked for David's pardon for the way he sinned against him. Um, Abish- Abishai um, wanted to put him to death. David rebuked him um, and um, told Shimei that he would not die. Ziba and his household rushed to meet David. Mephibosheth came to meet David. And when David asked why Mephibosheth <clears throat> didn't come with him, he said his servant had deceived and slandered him. <clears throat> David divided the land between Ziba and Mephibosheth. Barzillai came with David having provided for him um, and uh, and sent him over the uh, and having provided for him um, but he declined to return to Jerusalem with him when David asked um, he sent instead uh, Chimham uh, his son the men of Judah and Israel uh, were all clamoring uh, to show favor to David Um, But the men of Judah seemed to be fiercer in their support than the men of Israel. All right. So in this passage, we see that David is returning to um, Jerusalem, the seat of power of the kingdom. We see that everyone um, who abandoned him when Absalom took over, is now rushing back to to uh, bring him back into Jerusalem, trying to show that they favor him, trying to get on his good side, uh, presumably so that their rebellion will be forgotten and forgiven. There are many people who betrayed David. The whole kingdom, both kingdoms, Judah and Israel, turned away from him. But there are some specific actors that were especially egregious in their um, disrespect to David. One of them being Mephibosheth. David had shown such grace to Mephibosheth. And then he didn't come with David when he left. And earlier in... Second Samuel, we're not really told why that is. It, it, the story told by Ziba is that Mephibosheth thought, okay, well, this is my time to get back the land of, of my family, that I'll, I'll gain power again. Um, but of course, David had already given back his land. What, what presumably he would have been wanting was um, power, like the, the kingship, perhaps, which didn't really make a lot of sense, but it's the only information we had earlier given by Ziba. Now, in this passage, we have a counter-narrative to that from Mephibosheth saying that he was slandered by Ziba. That's not his intention, that since he's lame, he was not able to bring himself out of the city, 
and the servant deceived him. It's hard to say which of those stories is true. We don't know if Mephibosheth is telling the truth or Ziba was telling the truth. And David, seeing that Ziba was loyal to him, and Mephibosheth appeared not to be, but seeing also that there was a counter-narrative, another possibility, he doesn't seem willing to punish Ziba for something that can't be proven, uh, especially when Ziba did bring him food and sustenance and supported him. But he's also not willing to punish Mephibosheth at this point because he can't prove that Mephibosheth actually intended him harm. And Mephibosheth did come back right away to show his support. Uh, you could ask, well, okay, Mephibosheth, if you came down to meet David when he regained his kingdom, how could you not have come down? <laughs> um, I mean, there are many things that could be going on. And I'm sure David, this is not the only thing he's concerned with. He's got a lot of loose ends to tie up here. And so he wisely decides to split this um, land between these two and say, look, we don't need to talk about this anymore. Why We don't need to talk about it anymore. I'm just going to split everything down the middle. And then Mephibosheth, shows his heart for David and his submissiveness to David's authority and his dependence on David's provision when he says, oh, let him take it all since my Lord the king has come safely home. All right, so this matter is put to rest. Mephibosheth is laying himself at the mercy of David and trusting David for his provision moving forward. So the other detractor of David's that is mentioned here, aside from the sons of Zeruiah, which we might deal with separately, um, but it, it is uh, Shimei, the son of Gera, who cursed David on his way out as he was fleeing Absalom, um, who, <laughs> who uh, Abishai and, and his his crew wanted to kill on the way out. If you recall back in 1611, as Shimei is cursing him, or I'm sorry, um, at 9 of, of chapter 16, then Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? Same response. If, if he's cursing because the Lord has said to him, Curse David, who then shall say, why have you done so? So um, David had the same response then that he has now. Don't kill him. And he, I think his response to Abish, Abishai is not that justice shouldn't be dispensed. But in that earlier account, it is we need to wait on the Lord. Perhaps he's speaking the will of the Lord. And our first response shouldn't be just cut off his head. He's frustrated with the sons of Zeruiah, which include Joab and Abishai, um, because their first solution is always violence to these matters. Just murder somebody. And here, as he returns, yes, Shimei did wrong. He sinned. He knows he sinned. He's coming back and admitting he sinned. And he does deserve punishment. And he does perhaps deserve death. But David is frustrated still with Abishai because his first solution is always just murder someone, just kill them. And he's got more important things to deal with than defending his own honor at the moment. He does need to keep this kingdom united. He's, he can't, at least in, in the way he's seeing things as he returns, he, he can't afford to come in and just start killing people. Everyone who, who betrayed him. Now, it is also important to note that while David does show grace and some mercy 
to Shimei. He does not forget the wrong done him, and he does not forget that justice should be met. There is a putting off of the, the judgment against Shimei, but it is not forgotten. Um, it's just delayed. If, if we go to uh, 1 Kings chapter 2, in David's instructions to Solomon, as he's handing the kingship over to Solomon, he gives him instruction concerning many things, but some specific people. One of them being um, Shimei. He talks about Joab and, and Joab's murder of people in times of peace. But he also talks about Shimei. And he says this in uh, chapter 2, verse 8 of, of First Kings. And there is also with you Shimei, son of Gera, the Benjaminite from Bahurim, who cursed me with a grievous curse on the day when I went to Mahanim. But when he came down to meet me at the Jordan, I swore to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put you to death with the sword. Now, therefore, do not hold him guiltless. Now, we see in the passage in Second Samuel that David never said he forgave him. He never said his sin was put away from him. He never said he held him guiltless. He simply said, you shall not die. All right, so David's not going to kill him. And he says now to, to Solomon, therefore, do not hold him guiltless, for you are a wise man. You will know what you ought to do with him, and you shall bring his gray head down with blood to Sheol. Okay, so this is David's instruction to Solomon. I think this gives some insight to David's concern for justice, but also his patience in justice and his willingness to set aside his own injury, his own hurt, and his own desire for vindication of himself for the sake of the kingdom. When he returns, he's concerned with uniting the kingdom. But he is also not willing to lay aside justice either. And so he defers that and places that on his son Solomon, a wise man, to, to bring to fulfillment the justice against, the judgment against uh, these people. Uh, specifically in that passage, it was uh, Shimei and Joab. But in that passage, he also mentions um, Barzillai, who was, who was uh, faithful, who provided for David, and David wants to reward him, but he's old. He, he doesn't think it, 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 that it's going to be beneficial for him to go and be a burden to the king, so he sends his son instead, which is actually really a wise thing to do on the sake of Barzillai. Um, he in, installs his son in the court of the king, ensuring a longer time of interaction between his family and the king's family than if he had just gone there himself. And he also uh, graciously acknowledges the king's um, thankfulness to him and, and accepts a reward, but not for himself and for his son instead. And David in Second King, or First Kings chapter 2 mentions him to so, uh, San, um, Solomon as well, saying, Deal loyally with the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite. And let them be among those who eat at your table. So he is remembering, David is remembering not only those who wronged him, but also those who were gracious to him and provided for him. And I think for us, we, we can take some lessons from this. Uh, King David, not being perfect, but, but still having lessons that we can learn um, we see that sometimes justice, judgment is deferred. That is, is put off. But that does not mean it's not coming. And if there is no covering for sin, there will be judgment eventually. And Shimei may have thought 
And Abishai may have thought, and Joab may have thought, that they had gotten away with their sin. But they had not. Judgment would come eventually. And and David's judgment, as commanded and, and ordained through Solomon, is it, still just an earthly judgment. There's still the judgment to be um, enacted through Christ, through a holy God. And there are many people alive today who are taking God's patience as a license to sin because they think there will be no punishment. And they look around and they call everyone around them hateful for saying there's judgment coming. But there is judgment coming. And just because it has been forestalled does not mean it will not come to pass. And so, God is patient, just as David was patient. And much more so. <laughs> we need to be clear on that. But just as David would eventually mete out justice and, and have judgment come upon those who wronged him, how much more so will God judge his enemies, those who are not covered by the blood of his Son? And all of us have sinned against him. And so I think I would encourage all of us to have humility, to seek God's will in his word and to actually submit to it, to look to Christ as our savior and to actually bow to what he commanded us to do, which is to obey God's word. <clears throat> it's our only hope of escaping God's wrath on judgment day. My conclusion uh, for the day is that, that though David in his patience and wisdom and for the sake of the kingdom declines to take action against those who wronged him, he nevertheless does desire justice and plans to eventually repay people for their righteous and unrighteous deeds. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for your patience. Thank you that you do not count time as we do. Thank you that you are long-suffering and that you wait for all that you have called to come to yourself. God, we pray that you would use us, that you would um, help us to be your instruments of grace in this world, warning people of your wrath and thereby helping them to escape your wrath through dependence on the blood of Christ, submission to your word, obedience to you, God, we want to honor you in these ways because you have so richly blessed us. You deserve all of this and much, much more than we can give. We give you this day, um, giving it back to you as you've given it to us. Please be with us, walk with us, give us strength to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you again.